Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Reef. I believe this is going to be my very first DIY video. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've done any other DIY video before. I actually know I have it. So I'm pretty excited this is going to be my first DIY video. I really hope you guys enjoy it and get something out of it. Um, I want to give credit to where I saw this first done. I am not someone that came up with this. Um, I first saw this done on Reef Dudes, uh, Reef Dudes YouTube channel. Great guy, amazing, his name's Dev. Um, great content, he always has really good videos. So if you guys have time, I really recommend you go check him out. Not only go check him out guys, show him some love, subscribe to his channel, he's always putting out great content. Um, so yeah, wanna give uh, a shout out to him and just let you guys know that this was not my idea and I did see it uh, done with Reef Dudes. So anyways, what we're gonna be doing today is your own dosing, your DIY dosing containers. So of course you can go out and buy dosing containers. One thing is they're expensive. Now, believe it or not, it's not the price that I didn't like. If you guys have seen my tank in my JBJ45, the, the, uh, bottom, um, the bottom stand isn't too big. So I don't have a lot of space. Uh, this is gonna be in the same spot that my auto top off is. So I do not have a lot of space. So even buying those dosing containers they sell, um, which like I said, are very overpriced, um, I just don't have the space. So it wasn't really even the money, it was the space that I didn't have. Um, not only do I think these are better, I think they look better, they're easier to work on um, than those other really expensive ones. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your own at home. So um, I'm gonna be showing you guys all the tools you need. Obviously the two main things uh, you are gonna need are the vase uh, water bottles. Um, these were actually not very easy to find. I had to go to Walmart to find them in glass. Uh, Target didn't have them, Ralph's didn't have them, CVS didn't have them, absolutely Walgreens. No one has these things in glass anymore. Um, I did see plastic ones, but I didn't want plastic ones. I wanted glass. I'm sure you can order them online, but I didn't want to wait. So if you guys are wondering, Walmart was the only one to have them. And yeah, they do have only the big bottles. They didn't have the smaller ones. So. It was either get the big ones or don't get nothing at all. So I figured the big ones are good. I don't need to fill it all the way up, although I probably will. Um, but yeah, so you are gonna need these. And like I said, these I got from uh, Walmart. And um, be sure to empty out the liquid. Be sure to drink the water, guys. I wouldn't throw it away. It's actually really, really good water. I ended up getting the sparkling ones because they didn't have the, the uh, regular water. Um, even this one was actually really good. Um, so, you know, be sure to empty out the liquid. Uh, if it is a standard water one, don't worry about it, but this one was uh, sparkling water, so I gave it a little bit better rinse. Now you can go ahead and remove all the lettering. Um, I, I don't know, I really like the lettering. I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, you may think, but I actually like the lettering on it, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, so if you don't like it, get a, a razor blade. You can easily scrape it off. I mean, I don't know, I may scrape it off like Reef Dudes did. Um, I don't know yet, but at the moment, it doesn't bug me at all, so I'm probably gonna leave it on. Um, you can remove the tags and everything. Um, you know, you can do what Reef Dude did and really customize it. He actually painted the caps of it to match his tank. So they actually came out really, really nice. So that's pretty much it. Right now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay out all the tools you need uh, to modify and make this um, your very own DIY dosing container. So let's bring out everything you need and show you guys how to get these going on your own. Here's all you're gonna need for this build uh, for these um, DIY dosing bottles, dosing containers, whatever you want to call them. Um, this is what you're going to need. So starting off on the very top, um, a lot of this stuff, guys, is not a must. So I, I shouldn't say this is what you're going to need. This is what I'm using. And as well as I'm talking about it, I'm going to make recommendations. Um, for you guys to know, I'm also into RC um, airplanes, RC helicopters, RC drones. So a lot of stuff I'm talking about comes from that industry. And for you guys that do RC cars or something like that, you may relate. So the first thing you're going to need is glue. Um, coral glue, it, this is the same type of glue as we use for the corals. The only reason I'm using this is because it's a lot um, less, uh, the viscosity is a lot less than the coral glue. So it makes it, you know, it seeps into stuff a little bit better. It's not the super thin stuff, the crazy glue, um, but it's thicker than that, but it's thinner than the coral glue. And that's the only reason I'm using this. If all you have is coral glue, that's going to work great. Um, the next thing I have in our lineup is accelerator. So this is a cyanoacrylate accelerator. So this will even work for coral glue. 
Um, it is safe. Uh, I've seen it being catered to the, the reefing hobby, so that's how I know that it can also be used for uh, for reef tanks and stuff like that. So this, all this is is accelerator. If you don't have this and you don't have this, coral glue will work great. And the way you accelerate the coral glue is just put salt water on it. That'll accelerate the process and it'll take you a little bit longer, like five extra minutes, but that's it. So let's get that out of the way. Next thing you're gonna need is some male-to-male -male, um, adapters, um, air hose adapters. So I got these from Amazon, 40-piece uh, air valve connector, three-way T and straight. Um, I, I'll probably put a link in the description or you guys can just comment to me and uh, you know just ask me and I can easily link you guys to it. So this one here was didn't come with this. I actually bought this at the LFS. It's the same adapter that comes on the um, on the doser. But good thing I ordered these because I don't like these and I'm gonna show you why. Let me pull out the ones I ordered. So in the packet, there's gonna it's gonna come with T valves, but you don't care for those. Um, you're gonna want these bad boys, these male to male or extensions, whatever you want to call them. So the number one reason I don't like these, just look at you probably can't see it, but look at there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little hole. I mean, it's absolute. Let me try and get to focus. It's just tiny, guys. I didn't like that because I felt it's gonna restrict the the fluid flow. Look at that. That's just a lot bigger. There's going to be a lot less restriction. I mean, this guy can almost fit over that. That's how much more. And this is the same thing that comes on your doser. So I didn't want um, two restriction points on it. I felt it was going to, it probably would work with this, but I don't know. That was one of the reasons. The other reason I like this is obviously the cap. The cap on this has a certain thickness. So in that thickness, you're going to lose a little bit of material here. Um, so if I what let's say if the cap goes there, you're only going to be grabbing the fuel line from or sorry the air line from there down. Whereas these from Amazon, you can see you're going to lose that, but this whole piece is still going to be grabbing onto the airline. So that's the reason I recommend these. And like I said, these I got from from Amazon. One is because the restriction is a lot less. Two because they're longer. It allows for more contact with the airline. Second is airline. This I got for my LFS. I paid $2.99 for eight feet. I'm sure you guys can find it online. Tom Aquatics flexible air tubing. Uh, nothing fancy, here it is. And it's, it's very flexible. Um, I really liked it. So I got this. This as well, you're not gonna need. If you guys are into RC cars, uh, you probably know exactly what this is. It's a body, they call it a body reamer. Um, all it is is just a very sharp uh, graded uh, blade here that uh, it's used to, for making holes. So obviously if you don't have this, a standard um, a standard drill bit will get the job done and it'll actually get the job done really well. Um, and then I also got a manual uh, driving bit. So I'm not going to be using any, any uh, electrical tools, it's not going to be done by hand. So I'm going to start the hole. Um, for the vent or air vent valve, which I'm the air vent, sorry, I'm gonna show you later. I'm gonna start the hole with this, and this is how I'm actually I'm gonna only expand it manually with these bits here. So we'll, we'll cover that later as I'm going. The next thing you're gonna need, or re I recommend, is a knife, a very sharp knife. I recommend a hobby blade. Um, again, coming from the RC planes, I have a ton of these laying around, and this is gonna be used to clean up the burr at the very end as well as cut it. So with this, we're, we're gonna we're gonna pretty much roll it while cutting it at the same time. You guys are gonna see it's a little trick um, I learned and it, it's gonna really help you out. So as far as the tools, that pretty much covers everything we are gonna need. Obviously, if you do wanna cut this with scissors, you can. The only thing is you may uh, crack it. Um, if you have a Dremel, a Dremel will work too. This one that I already made, I actually use a Dremel um, to cut it, but then I remember this method, so I don't even need to bring out the power tools with that. So right now we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to uh, get this done, and you guys can hopefully follow along and uh, do your very own DIY uh, dosing container at home. So before we begin, I'm gonna explain the finished one so you guys can kind of see where we're gonna be heading with it. And the only reason I'm laying it down because this thing's super big, um, it doesn't even really fit in frame if I stand it up. So that's the only reason I'm laying it down um, for you guys to see it. So the first thing we're gonna do 
is we're gonna need to remove the cap. Obviously make sure you rinse it out. This you're not gonna need right now. You're gonna need this until you're done. All the work's gonna be done on the cap. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drill the main hole um, for this mill to mill extension. That's gonna run all the way through. We're gonna CA glue or use coral glue on the very top and then as well on the inside. Um, we're gonna glue it on through the inside, through the outside. And then to adapt, here let, let me show you guys. To adapt the mill plug to this bad boy, you may be saying, well, shoot, this, uh, this doesn't quite uh, go on there. Well, we're gonna be using the airline tubing. Obviously the airline tubing goes over that and it goes over this piece as well. You can see there. So that's gonna be used to join them both together. This is, I guess, gonna be like used as an adapter. Another thing I just realized that I forgot to mention, you're gonna need this poly, I think it's called polycarbonate. Um, this is pretty much a stiff airline tubing. It doesn't flex at all. Um, I forgot to mention it a little bit earlier, but I got this from the LFS. I don't know the size of it. Um, I mean, if you guys wanna, this is what it is, thin wall 316. I think this is, I think the inside is 316, so I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, uh, thin wall, that's the, the barcode number if you guys wanna Google the barcode number. Um, but I, this I got from the LFS. I didn't find Amazon with these. Um, or else I would link you guys to it. So yeah, and this is just a zip tie I put on it. I was actually helping it to mark the cutting point with the Dremel, uh, so you could ignore that. But yeah, sorry I forgot to mention this a little bit earlier. Um, but anyways, so we're gonna mount this guy in the cap, glue it, then we're gonna put the, the airline hose, which is gonna be our adapter, you can see here, to this bad boy. And you wanna make this you want this length to be so that it ends up as close to the bottom as possible. You can see it's, it's like literally that far off the bottom. So I'm very comfortable with that. And that just makes sure it doesn't kink. Cause if you put hose like this, like this hose here, it can like curl up and move over time and you don't want that. Cause then you're, you're, you can either be drawing in air or just not going to be uh, working as efficient. So, the very first thing we're gonna do, take off the cap. In my case, since I have uh, a body reamer, I'm gonna use that. If you don't have a body reamer, use a drill bit. I'd probably start off with a small drill bit, at least as, as your pilot, and then work your way to, to the actual one that it's gonna be. If anything, guys, you wanna undersize it because the lip on here is not very big. So if you do it too big, it's gonna fall all the way through and that's not what we're after. So in my case, I don't need a power tool. I'm just gonna use, you can see this thing is super, super sharp point. So you can see the center right there. And then just, in my case, it's gonna take me a little bit, but if you do have a power tool, it's gonna take you a lot less. I'm not in no big rush, so I'm just doing it like this. And another thing you might wanna do at this point will make it a little bit easier is remove this. Now a few of you guys may be saying, well, if you remove that, you're not gonna have a seal, an airtight seal. Well, the airtight seal really doesn't matter, guys, because we're gonna make a vent hole. If you don't have this vent hole, you're gonna create kind of like a vacuum in here and the pump just isn't gonna work. Um, so you have to have a, a air hole and this cannot be airtight. So there's really no need um, to have this because it's just going to get in the way. What I found if I leave it on, when I screw it on, it actually blocks the vent hole. So it was actually going to cause more problems uh, leaving it on. So that's why I remove it. So let's continue opening up this bad boy. And so as you get closer to the sides, you want to be testing it because you don't want to do the hole too big. So if you are using a drill bit, you want to take it easy guys, start with a pretty small size. If you want it to be a really, really tight fit and you don't have one of these, 
what you could do is use like a little, uh, like a hobby knife. And actually, once you got it close to the size, just do this. And it's essentially the same thing uh, that this is doing. So you can see right now that I'm getting really, really close to the size. I'm actually going to take it easy because I know a few more turns and this thing's 100% complete. There we, that's a super tight fit. You can see that. Oh, shoot, that's actually too tight of a fit. So a little bit, I just need to open it a little bit more. There we go, I'm actually very happy. That's a, look, I'm really pulling it. Look at that, it's not even coming out. I mean, I can push it from this side. Oh shoot, that's actually real, there it is. That's actually super tight, but I'd rather it be very tight. Um, so all I'm gonna do right now is come in with this blade and just clean up the burrs on both the inside and the outside. And when this is all done, we're gonna give it a really good rinse. So I wouldn't be too worried um, if anything's flying around. So once this is right here, I'm very happy with it. We want to do, there's no right or wrong way of installing this. Just pretty much push it in. You see that very tight fit. And before you push it all the way in, this is a, a tip I'd really recommend. Don't push it all the way in yet. Let it stay a little bit outside so you can get glue right there. Then you push it all the way in. So I'll leave that there. Let me see if I can show you guys the viscosity of this thing. You can see it's it's a lot thinner than coral glue. Let me put it right here. So you guys can see it. It's actually, there it is. You can, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a lot more watery than coral glue. You can see it's not as goopy, if you will. So let me do this here in front of the camera. So you guys can get an idea. Okay, and this isn't the final, I'm just getting it on the bottom so it at least covers the whole bottom of it and seals it. So as soon as I push it down, you're gonna see it's gonna make a little. Let me push it down first. You can see it makes a little, I wouldn't wanna call it glob, but like a little round, rounded edge on it. So I don't know guys, the, the video for some reason cut out. Um, the, so I'm gonna try and cover what you guys missed. The only thing you guys missed was me putting a little bead around there, misting on some accelerator. All I did is mist it on. I let it sit for about a minute, blew on it for a little, and you can see it's already dry. And it's, this thing is solid. It ain't moving at all. So the only thing I'm gonna do now, just to make it a little bit more solid, is put some glue on on the inside around the joint which is all through the bottom of here so let me do that I'm gonna it's really difficult to get it all on camera guys so I'm gonna uh, just because on here it's very difficult for me to get the glue and then be able to see it so excuse me if it's not all in camera I'll show you guys as soon as it's done oh okay Okay, there we go. So I don't know if you guys can see, there's a really nice bead of glue all around there. So the only thing to finish that off, you're gonna see here how I missed it with the accelerator. It's literally a mist. You can see I actually blow it into the mist and then blow on that for about, you know, a good uh, 10 seconds, blow on it. That'll get it going. Let it sit for about a minute. While that sits, what I'm gonna do is put that away. We don't need the glue anymore. And like I said, guys, if you don't have this glue or this accelerator, um, coral glue and salt water, will, your salt water will be your accelerator and you'll be perfectly fine. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're obviously gonna wanna measure um, the length. 
of your, your tube that's going to go in the Voss water bottle. So you can do the zip tie method, which what I do, I put a zip tie around it and move it. I put it pretty tight. So this can be my marker. And the way you can do that is here. Let me show you guys is you put it all the way to the bottom. Okay. And then you put it flush to the top right here. But you also have to remember, even though it's flush, when this thing, when this cap is flush, there's about, let me measure it. There's about that much coming out from that piece. So what we do from there, we subtract it. So here I'm going to move the zip tie. So I subtracted that much and this should be my overall length minus, minus that little piece. But to give us a little bit more margin of error, I'm actually going to come back a little bit more. Because what I'm going to do, remember I have this to also be my adjustment. So I can cut this one pretty long and then I can either feed, feed this um, polycarbonate tube higher or lower to give me the overall height. So that's why I like this method a lot because it really lets you um, to adjust for it. Obviously I am going to cheat a little bit. I do have one already pre-made. So I know the exact length it needs to be. So all I'm going to do is copy it. But if you use the method I just showed you with the zip tie, you'll be perfectly fine. So let me see here. Okay. Look at that. I was off by just a hair right there. Let me make sure. Yep. That's it. So I was barely off by anything. It's crazy. So let me put that one back. Move that one to there. All right, so we have this bad boy marked right there. We got this already dry and ready to go for us. So let's move everything out of the way. So here, now what we need to do is cut it. You can use various methods to cut this. You can use a Dremel. Um, you can use scissors, although with scissors, I'd be very careful because you can shatter the piece um, and you don't want to do that because then it's going to have cracks in it. Uh, the way I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do today is the rolling method. So all I have here is an X-Acto knife and I'm going to be rolling it um, to cut it. So first I'm just going to start um, with the mark like that. Once I got the mark, I can remove the zip tie because I already see the mark. And then again, I go right over it and I just, I literally start rolling it while pressing down on it. You don't need to press super hard. but you know, press it with some authority and you just want to let it roll. And guys don't do this over like a wooden table that your wife really likes or, you know, something of value to someone in your home because the last thing you want to do is uh, scratch it. So I don't recommend, there you go. You can see it, it cuts off cleanly. Look at that. Barely any burrs on that thing. There's no burr on the outside. There's a little burr on the inside, but that's where this guy comes in. Let's see right here. And when you do blow air or water, you want to blow obviously in the opposite end. Because <laughs> the last thing you want to do is blow it in. Not that you'd hurt anything, but you want to make sure you clean up as much of the burrs as you can to leave this thing really nice. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. I'll probably run some water through it just in case. Okay. Okay. So now that we have this piece cut, we can put, well, actually, yeah, I'm going to use this. So obviously if you have some scissors, you can cut um, this piece off. This thing works just as good. It's just silicone tubing. So it comes right off. And then the way you want to get this is you obviously want the whole piece to slide over that. So 
So that put that puts me right there. And then you want about the same amount to, to slide over um, this acrylic piece, or not acrylic, the plastic polycarbonate, whatever you want to call it. So that'll be right about there. So we want to cut it. And that leaves us with a piece like that. So all there is to do now, put a little bit of saliva on this, just so it slides in easier. I'm gonna push it all the way up like that. And then put a little bit of saliva on this piece on the outside and then just slide it. I wouldn't slide this one all the way in um, and I'll tell you why, or at least not yet. Because remember we did cut it a little bit short so we want to be able to adjust. Let's see here. Look at that, that's actually perfect. Uh, it needs to go in a little bit. You see how it's binding right there? So we wanna push it in a little bit more. So not much, it just needs a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm actually very happy with how that piece came out. So you can see this piece is not gonna flex at all. And then we install it. And you can see there on the bottom, it's not binding at all. There's about that much spacing on the bottom. You can see it's not gonna get kinked. And once you're done, you have two identical Voss bottles um, ready to go. So all there is to do now at this point is obviously run your line um, from here up to your doser and then from your doser to your tank or you know however your plumbing is and um, you're good to go so that's going to be uh, pretty much it for most of it the only thing left now to do is make your vent you can see there or you can't forget your vent because if you forget your vent um, you're going to be creating a, a suction so that's only the last thing to do so to do that just offset it a little bit. I'm gonna do mine right here. And here you can pop out your um, your drill if you have one. I have one, I just don't wanna take it out. All right, so you can see I pretty much did this whole thing manually. Um, started, with, uh, started with this guy. Then went the, the standard um, reamer, and then just this bit finished it manually. And then there is some burrs on the um, top here, so we're going to use the knife to clean this up. See there are all the burrs coming out of it. That's just to make it look clean. Also clean out the burrs from the inside. Generally that you should have more on the outside just because um, it's driving all of the, the drill bit is driving all the plastic out. Okay. So one thing when making uh, the vent guys, you don't want to make it smaller than your output because then you're going to still be creating that, that suction. Um, so you want to make this at least this big or bigger than this because um, if you make it too small, it's you're still going to, um, the pump's going to be have or the pump's going to be working way too hard to get the 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 uh, liquid out. So have it be either this big or a little bit bigger than this, and then you should be fine. All there is to do now is rinse it. Make sure you don't have any plastic particles in there. Um, rinse everything once more, and then you're ready to fill these with whatever you want. You know, you can store them for later or whatever you're looking to do. Um, but at this point, you're good to go. You can fill them with whatever you're going to be dosing. And that's pretty much it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you guys found something useful. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to leave them down in the comment box below. Um, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I'm going to put a link down in the comment box, or I mean the description box. Also guys, if I earned your subscription, 
be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you are subscribed, be sure to hit the bell um, to get instant notifications as soon as I put a new video up and you know, I'll keep you up to date. You'll be the first one to get notified. Um, so yeah, guys, we're going to wrap it up for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of today's video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. All right, guys, so right after I finished the video, I actually was looking at them a little bit more in detail. Um, and you can see I actually ended up <laughs> removing all the Voss labeling. Um, this one obviously doesn't have it removed. Um, but this one, the only thing I left is the milliliter. So I know this is an 800 milliliter um, bottle. And the only thing I need to remove is this. Um, it has a little bit of residue behind it. So I'm going to have to get like some goof off or something like that um, to remove. But you can see I removed it with this little um, blade. It was actually really simple to remove. Um, I think any, any kind of blade will, will remove it. Um, so now I just need to do this bad boy. Another thing when I finished the video, um, that I ended up doing is I put this, I use the same adapter here, the male up here, um, and I put a little extension of airline. The only reason I did that whenever I'm removing it and putting it back on and removing it, instead of always applying pressure to this joint, I'm only going to be applying pressure and stressing this out. Um, so I don't stress this piece out and this piece is always very strong. Um, that's all you don't need to do this the only reason i did is to relieve some stress from removing it and putting it back on removing it putting it back on um and that's pretty much it guys so yeah like i said i i before i ended the video i mean as soon as i ended the video i really thought about it, like holy shoot i kind of do like it without it so uh, that's pretty much it guys once again uh thanks for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed the video